Okay, today we're going to demonstrate uh, catheterization, and of course you could have a male or a female. In the case today, there will be a female, and as we go through the skill, we'll talk about some differences in male and female. So the first thing I'll go over are the supplies that are needed. Um, so you will need a Foley catheterization tray, and all facilities, you know, these are different, how their different companies have different packages. So you'll have your tray, and hopefully everything is in here that we need. You can check the contents. Um, also, we will need clean gloves, a bath blanket, a waterproof pad, and then some tape um, to use at the end. So the first thing we would do would be to confirm our order and, of course, gather our supplies. We gather our supplies, bring those into the room. And then we'll go in and we'll introduce ourselves. So, good morning, Miss Long. I've identified her by her ID band. I'm going to have her to state her name, state her date of birth. My name is Brittany, and I'm going to be your nurse today. And the doctor has ordered for you to have a catheter, um, which is a tube that goes into your bladder to help drain it's the urine out of your bladder. Um, he says that you are retaining that. And you're not able to... Um, get rid of that urine like you should. So he wants to put this catheter in to drain the urine out of your bladder. Do you have any questions? Okay, and we'll talk about some things um, during the procedure. Um, you know, may need your help. So we've explained our procedure. We've gathered our supplies. Um, some things with catheter, um, you want to make sure that you um, do get your um, bed at a really good level um, for your body. Um, and also another thing with catheter, um, you want to make sure that you have very good lighting. And as you follow along in your lab manual, um, you'll notice that those are some things that it states. So, of course, before we do any type of patient care, we want to make sure that we wash our hands before we start care. So, um, in order to get our bed up, we would raise our side rails. Um, I'll just raise the one on my side. Um, I'll block your view if I were to raise that one on that side. And we're going to raise the bed up to a good level. That's pretty good for me. And then we'll also want to go ahead and lower her head. We want her in supine position. Okay. And I'll lower the rail beside that I'm working. Alright. So we want to arrange our supplies and our equipment on our table. Again, providing with good lighting. We have good lighting in here. Um, if this were a male, um, we would want to position them supine again, just slightly abduct their thighs. Um, for a female, it talks about in your lab manual um, the dorsal recumbent position with the knees flex, soles of the feet flat on the bed and about two feet apart. So we'll do that um, as I get her draped with a bath blanket. the drape is going to be providing privacy, also providing warmth. Um, other ways of providing privacy would be, of course, make sure that your door is closed in your room and that your curtains are pulled. Alright, so I'm going to pull down her bed linens. diamond shape. It's my bath blanket. Okay, so since she's a female, we want her to flex her knees and her feet flat on the bed, dorsal recumbent. so that we can provide privacy and warmth as much as possible. Once you see this position, 
Um, I might have to go ahead and lay her legs flat for the video. Okay, so then I have my drape here that will provide privacy in the peri area. Okay. So for the video, I'm going to go ahead and lay her legs down so that we're able to see. I'll leave this one up so you'll kind of know that this one should be up. Okay, so we'll close her, the drape for now because we don't want any, her to be exposed. Okay, so we've got her draped. Um, then what we want to do is we want to don our clean gloves. And any time before you do catheter care, um, this is considered a sterile procedure. So we are going to want to provide peri care. Okay, so I'm going to put my gloves on. Then the next thing we want to do is place our waterproof pad under her buttocks. And you can have the arm to roll over or you could have her to lift up her thighs and you could place that underneath her buttocks. That's to protect her bed. Okay. I'm not going to actually do the pericare skill. That's actually a skill you learn in nurse aid. Um, you should be prepared, though, to be able to explain how to provide peri care. Of course, you would need a pan with warm water. Temperature usually is 105 to 109 degrees. Um, you're going to have a washcloth. You will make a mitt with your washcloth. Of course, for the female, you're going to separate the labia. With your washcloth, you want to make uh, three different swipes on each side of the labia, or one swipe on each side of the labia for two swipes, one down the middle, um, using a clean part of your washcloth each time. If you need to do that again, you can. Um, of course, then you would want to rinse that area, make sure that it's good, clean, and dry. Um, for the male, you would want to make sure that you did catheter care, or I'm sorry, um, peri care, particularly cleaning around the urethra. So you would need to retract the foreskin if the patient was uncircumcised and clean around the tip in a circular motion. Again, making sure to clean with the clean part of your washcloth each time. Okay. So once peri care is completed, you put your um, drape back down. You're going to take off your clean gloves. These would be considered dirty now. We're going to throw these in the trash. Um, then we would go wash our hands. Of course, if you need to raise your rails to walk away from the bed, you would need to do that. So we're going to go wash our hands. Okay. So now we're going to get ready to actually get sterile. And in your lab manual, it talks about making sure you stand on your dominant hand side. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to stand on the patient's right side. It's a lot easier to use my dominant hand, and in order to be sterile and to make that effective, you would want to stand on your dominant side. All right. So then the next um, step is going to be we're ready, going to be ready to get sterile. So we're going to open our packaging using sterile technique, um, and then the first thing we'll do then we'll, we're going to be is to don our sterile gloves. So. When doing catheter care, you want to make sure that you have everything where you need it. Of course, when we're talking about getting sterile, we have to make sure everything stays in our line of vision. So I'm going to put my table kind of across my bed. And I'm going to remove my tape from the table and the call bell at this time. Those aren't things that I need. When you have a sterile field, you want to make sure that just your sterile field is, is all you have on your table. So again, I have my catheterization tray, and what you want to check on your tray is to check your expiration date. Of course, make sure it's not expired. These are for practice purposes only. Check your contents. Make sure that you do have everything in that that you need. Um, again, trays that, are, that come automatically packaged should have everything, and that should tell you. So, so you would open up your package. Now I'm going to use this package as a little trash can. I'm going to roll down the edges and I'm going to kind of make a, you know, just have a good opening. And I'm going to set this over to the side of the patient. And you'll be able to see that here in just a second. Okay. So I don't need this anymore. Um, you do want to also make sure that you check the size of your catheters, and we will talk about the uh, normal size uh, 
those are measured in what's called French. This particular one is a 14 French um, with a 5 milliliter um, balloon. So that'll be important later on when we get ready to do some of our charting. So we don't need this, we can just kind of toss that to the side. And now we're ready to open up our sterile packaging. So remember the outside of our package, we can touch anything we need to. So it's taped on the bottom, I'm going to untape that. Remember you just don't want to make sure you cross over any of your sterile field. I like to make mine a square. And then remember you also have your one inch border that you can touch. It's considered not sterile. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to don my sterile gloves. So I want to reach in my package and pull those out. And I'm going to come over to the side of my table here and put on my sterile gloves. careful to not touch my sterile field. gloves. I'm sterile. And I'm going to knock this off with my elbow. And now I'm going to get ready to get some more of my supplies out. Now, the way that these kits are set up sometimes is a little bit different and sometimes we have to think outside the box in order to figure out um, you know, how we need to set up or how our tray is set up. Um, sometimes the sterile gloves are not the item that is on top. Sometimes you will see kits where it has this sterile drape on top and you just have to realize and you have to just kind of do whatever your box is and what the facility, whatever type of packaging it has. Sometimes this drape may not actually be considered sterile. If so, that's fine. You would just get the drape out and you would put it down like I'll show you here in just one second. Um, so again, it just kind of depends. Um, but in this case, our gloves were on top. So we are going to use this drape that's on top next. Um, we're going to pick this up out of the box. And I'm going to step away from my sterile field. And I'm going to unfold this drape and I'm going to wrap my thumbs around the edge and it has a plastic side and then just a cloth side or a shiny side we'll call it. Shiny side is going to go down. Okay, So this is how I kind of have this wrapped and I'm going to wrap it on around and that's going to take care of my sterile gloves. My sterile gloves are protected. Okay. Now you have to be careful here because again we don't want to reach over our sterile field. So we're going to come inside our patient and we are going to lay down our sterile field drape. And everything's sterile here so I can touch this if I need to fix it. And straighten it out a little bit. Okay. Then the next thing you'll see is another drape on top of the box and this is a fenestrated drape what they call it and you'll see that it has a hole in the middle of it and we're just going to kind of take this and lay it over the peri area and this just kind of provides another sterile field for us okay all right so now we have our packaging here and I'm going to kind of turn it around and you can kind of do whatever you want to. Remember, everything inside here is, is sterile. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get out my iodine solution. 
and I'm going to pour that, you would tear it and pour that over my cotton balls. Sometimes um, packaging is not an actual liquid, it, they are actually swabs that are already coated in the iodine solution. So whichever you have, um, if you had swabs, I would open the packaging and then I would just kind of set them inside my box until I get ready to use those. Okay, but in this case, we're going to open it. And for the concepts of the mannequin, we can't touch them with iodine, so we're just going to pretend that we pour the iodine over our cotton balls. And then you want to drop this in the trash, but again, wherever you put this, make sure that you don't have, take your eye out of your sterile field. Okay, let's see. Get this to where hopefully the camera can see that. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to um, turn my kit around here. I'm going to grab my lubricating jelly and I'm going to open it. And I want to squirt it out on my tray. This is to lubricate the catheter tip. Um, again, just, you know, it doesn't matter. You just want to drop that. We can always clean up later. We don't want to take a chance at breaking our sterile field. Um, there is a cup in here. I don't need that cup because the doctor didn't order a specimen. But if you needed a, a sterile urine specimen, you could use that cup. And then the next thing is going to be this syringe of normal saline. It has 10 ml of saline in it. Um, if you remember, I mentioned 5 ml. We actually have a bulb that is 5 ml, so we only have to put in 5 ml to blow up, the, to inflate that balloon correctly. So I'm going to take the tip off of that, and again, I just want to kind of drop that, get rid of that, and pick up my catheter tubing, and this is going to be the balloon where the balloon will be inflated. So I want to attach my syringe here and I want to gently test my balloon, my catheter. Sometimes these catheter tips have a package or a plastic package around them. Um, if so, you would just remove that. This one here does not. So I'm going to gently press on the syringe, testing to make sure that the balloon doesn't have any holes and it doesn't leak, which it doesn't. So now I'll withdraw that liquid. Again, we're sterile. You want to be careful and not let your uh, catheter tip, because this is the part that really needs to be sterile, flop around. So keep that cold in your hand. Some of these kits will tell you, um, particularly not to test the balloon. Um, again, that's different manufacturers have different, uh, you know, done different types of research. Some believe that when you test the balloon, um, it can actually cause microfiber tears in the balloon. And then it's believed that those microfibers could actually maybe irritate um, the urethra and cause infection. So again, if your kit says not to test the balloon, then you would not obviously test the balloon. Okay, the next thing I want to do, I wanted to keep this syringe attached here so that that will help me in a few minutes when I actually insert the catheter. Okay, the next thing I want to do without crossing over my sterile field and I'm contaminating, I'm going to take my catheter tip and I want to lubricate it. Okay, if you have a female, you want to lubricate about one to two inches of your tip. If you had a male, based on anatomy, you're going to lubricate about five to seven inches. And again, lubrication just helps to reduce the friction of the catheter going into the urethra. Now I can coil this back into my box so that it's ready to use. Okay. Okay. So now we're ready to clean um, the peri area. So I'm going to need to maybe rearrange my supplies a little bit here to get my cotton balls over here with the antiseptic solution. Okay, so also what's going to happen during this time is one hand is going to become non-sterile. 
that needs to be your non-dominant hand. And the reason for that is I'm going to be spreading the labia of the female. Um, if it were a male, I would be um, grasping the penis and holding the penis at this time. So I'm going to spread the labia of the female. Okay, now my non-dominant hand is now non-sterile. Um, also, I should mention now, but while you were doing peri care, it would have been a really good idea to look at the urethra to make sure that you see where the catheter needs to go um, according to the person's anatomy. Everyone is different and that anatomy can vary sometimes. So I should know where I need to go at this point. So with my sterile hand, I'm going to pick up my tongs and I'm going to grasp one of my cotton balls with that that are covered in the betadine solution which also reminds me you would want to make sure that the person is not allergic to betadine which we would have checked beforehand and so I want to clean in a downward motion okay so from top to bottom just like you would if you were doing pericare and I'm going to start with the opposite labia so I have the labia spread and I'm going to clean down this side, being careful not to come back up and contaminate. Now my bag, my trash bag, is right here on the other side of my patient, so I can just drop that. And I'm going to come around my field. I'm going to grab another cotton ball, clean the side closest to me, and then I'm going to do another one down the middle. Okay, if I need to clean more I could. Um, at this time I'm also finished with the tongs so I can toss those in my trash. Okay, so now I have to continue holding with my non-dominant hand. I can't let the labia go because I've cleaned that. We don't want to let that um, get dirty. So with my sterile hand I'm going to take my sterile box And I'm going to place it on my bed next to my patient. Okay, so I'll grasp my catheter tip tubing. And at this time you might have your patient bear down gently like they were going to urinate. Um, as you insert it, that just kind of relaxes the sphincter in the urethra. So be very careful when you are inserting your catheter. Now these are mannequins; it may not go in the amount of time, the amount of uh, the length that I need it to. But just understand, you know, these are mannequins. So I'm going to insert the catheter, not you know, being careful not to touch. Also, I do not want my fingers, my sterile fingers, to ever touch the patient. It needs to only touch the catheter. So I'm going to advance the catheter about one to two inches for the female. Once I have urine return in my tubing, which I can see that's in my box, I'm going to advance an additional half to one inch. Okay, if this were a male, I would insert the catheter six to eight inches into the penis. And once I have urine return, I would also advance another half to one inch, just to make sure that we are in the bladder and we're not still in the urethra. So once I have urine return in my tubing, I'm going to let go with my non-dominant hand and I'm going to come down just about an inch and hang on to my catheter tubing because I don't want that to move because there's nothing securing it just yet. And I'm going to take with my dominant hand my syringe and I want to insert the amount of liquid it says to insert based on how big the size of your balloon the amount of liquid that it'll hold and of course again this is a mannequin it's not allowing me to push that in all the way so I push that in that would secure the catheter then you want to just tug gently to make sure that you you know don't get any it doesn't come out okay and at this time the catheter would be considered inserted I have urine in my bag so now we need to finish up our procedure. Um, there's no reason to have to be sterile at this point. And that may fall out because it's not really in there. 
So I'll unattach my syringe here. And I'll take my catheter out of my box. And we can, normally we would just tear this off and get rid of all this. Again, nothing sterile anymore. And probably what I'll even do at this time is take my gloves off and I will finish securing the catheter. If, since we have a female, um, depending on what the facility uses, some use leg, by, um, leg straps, some use tape, but we could tape our catheter. To the inner thigh of the female. If it were a male, we could tape it to the top of the thigh or to the top of the abdomen. Then you want to take your catheter bag and you have clips here. These clips will attach to the bed frame and your catheter bag needs to always be below the level of the bladder in order to allow for correct flow. Also we want to coil the catheter tubing in the bed. That helps with the flow of the urine. And then there are these clips usually attached and we can attach that to the bottom sheet. So now to finish out the skill, we will cover up our patient. Raise up our rail on the side we're working. Lower the bed back down. We want to make sure that they are comfortable in bed. Lower the side rails. Raise up their head if needed. Make sure they have a way to call for assistance. And then, of course, we would wash our hands after patient contact, and then we would document and report any unexpected findings.